Okay, this is lesson 2.2, length of a line. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to look at determining the length of a line using the distance formula for the distance between two points. Now, the distance formula to determine the length of a line looks like d for distance is equal to the square root, it's a big square root sign, of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And all of that is underneath the square root sign. Now this distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem, which is the a squared plus b squared equals c squared equation. And we'll get into a little bit in class as to where that comes from, but for this purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you how to use the formula to calculate the distance. So let's look at two examples. The first one is we're going to calculate the length. So it says to make round parts, programmable machine tools often use a coordinate system with the origin at the center of the part. How far are the centers of the mounting holes A and B in this cam? The coordinates are in centimeters and we're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So we've got our two mounting holes A and B here and here. I'm going to write the coordinates of these points off to the right here. So A has a coordinate and B also. And if we read the coordinates of the point off, we've got negative 3 for x and 5 for y. For our mounting hole A and mounting hole B, the x is 2 and the y is negative 4. So here's our points. Now the x2, x1, y2, y1 are very much like the x2, x1, y2, y1 in the slope formula. Uh, we use it actually pretty much the exact same way. Um, we can pick either of these points as our first point and we can label. So we can call this our x1, this would be our x2. This is then our y1, and this would be our y2. Remember the ones go together, the twos go together, and we have an x and y in both of our points. So let's try to use the equation. Now distance is equal to, and square root, I'll write second to make it a little bit easier to write the equation, plus y2 minus y1 squared, and that whole thing going to the square root sign. So let's replace these variables with the letters or numbers that represent them. Well, x2 minus x1 would be 2 subtract negative 3. So in our first bracket, it would be 2 subtract negative 3. That is replace the numbers. I missed my squared up here. Make sure we get that because we're going to square the answer to that bracket. Now we're going to add the y2 minus y1. Well, y2 is negative 4. We're going to subtract 5. And we're going to square that answer, and the whole thing at the end is square root of And let's do a little bit of math here. 2 subtract negative 3 is 5. So our first bracket's just going to be 5 squared. And our second bracket, negative 4 minus 5, is negative 9. We've got negative 9 squared. We're going to square root that answer. 5 squared is 25. Negative 9 squared would be negative 9 times negative 9. It's 81. So we have the square root of 25 plus 81. 25 and 81 is 106. So we have the square root of 106. And that would give us a distance to the nearest tenth of 10.3, if we square root 1 of 6. And it doesn't say units, does it? Centers of a mounting hole, coordinates are in centimeters. So it's 10.3 centimeters. We rounded that, but that's our final answer. So I mentioned this comes from the Pythagorean theorem. I also mentioned we're going to talk about it in class. Let's take a second and talk about it now. 
x2 minus x1 is just comparing the x value. So if I were to draw that on here, we've seen x2 minus x1 before, just represents the run. And the y2 minus y1 represents the rise. So we have the rise and the run here. This is your x2 minus x1. This is your y2 minus y1. And if we complete the triangle here, we're looking for this distance. Well, that's a right angle triangle. And if we remember Pythagorean theorem, a squared, or y2 minus y1 squared, plus b squared, x2 minus x1, is equal to c squared. This c side is our distance. Now, to get rid of the squared on the d squared, we would square root. This is where the equation comes from. We're basically just doing Pythagorean theorem. We're finding out the distance here and here, adding or squaring them, adding them, and square rooting them. That sounds complicated, but let's look. Count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Look what number we ended up with. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look what number we ended up with. Nine. So this is just nine squared plus five squared would equal d squared. And to solve, we would square root at the end. This is all this equation is. It's just a rearranged version of the Pythagorean theorem. But this is also our length of a line formula. Let's try one more example. Compare distances. An air ambulance service uses a grid system to help estimate flying times and fuel requirements. Coordinates on this grid are distances in kilometers east and north of a reference point on the lower left-hand corner of a uh, map, not now, of northern Ontario. A helicopter ambulance picks up a patient at point P. The nearest hospitals can provide the treatment the patient needs are in point T Timmins or point S Sudbury. Well, let's draw what this might look like. Let's start by putting point P here, and the coordinates of point P are 96 and 197. Now, if we had a graph, we could actually graph these points. We're just going to use relativity. So that means like uh, up to the left, to the right, down from our point P. Let's look. Point P is 96 and 197. So if we wanted to graph Timmins, Timmins is 200 on the x scale, so that would be further to the right and 296, which is above 197. So I'm going to put Timmins up here. 200 and 296. Sudbury is 232 and 80. Well, 232 is bigger than 200, so it's further to the right, and 80 is less than 197. So I'm going to put it way down here. So Sudbury is 232 minus 8, 80. Now, where you graph these points, it's all relative. It's not accurate. It's just to show what we're doing. What are we doing? We're looking for the distance between P and T, and we're looking for the distance between P and S, because we want to find out which one's closer. And based on how I drew it, it definitely looks like T is closer. But because I didn't graph it, it's not necessarily true. I might not be graphing or sketching very accurately. It says rough diagram. But let's find these distances. How do we find these distances? Well, these are distance formula between P and T and between P and S. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to call our distance P T distance P to T. The equation will be the same as the one we've already used. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all square rooted. What points are we using? Well, we're using these two. So x2 plus x1. We'll call this our first point. This is our second. So it will be 200 minus 96 squared. x2, x1 plus y2 minus y1, y2, y1, 296 minus 197, and then square root again. 
If we subtract 296, we get 104. So it's 104 squared plus 296, subtract 197 is 99. 99 squared. Square root. If we square these and add them in our calculator, what do we get? We get 104 squared plus 99 squared, 20,617. So our final answer is going to be the square root of 2617. So the distance between P and T will be square root answer, or 2617, 143.6. And we're working in kilometers. So that's our distance from P to T. What I would like you to try to do is find the distance from P to S. You can model it just like we did this one, and then you're going to come up with a conclusion at the end. You're going to decide where the air ambulance should take the patient, Timmins or Sudbury. Probably you're going to choose the one with the shortest distance. To figure that out, we first got to figure out the distance of PS. Once you're done checking, um, be sure to check your answers on the course website. And uh, that's it for lesson 2.2, length of a line. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.